Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. So now this is the last and final theory video on this financial statement analysis, ratio analysis. After this next video onwards, inshallah, we'll start the problems on ratio analysis. Now last three videos I have explained you about the liquidity ratio, solvency ratio and activity ratio. The last category of ratio is the profitability ratio. So in this video I am going to explain you what do you mean by profitability ratio and what are the significant ratios will, which will come under the head profitability ratio. So before starting the explanation take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Now, profitability ratios. These are the ratios which express the profitability of the concern. Profitability means the rate at which profits are generated. The generation of profit rate is called profitability. So profitability ratio measure the profitability of the concern of the business. Generally they are calculated. The profitability is related either with the revenue or with the investment. So directly if we say the profit of a business is 2 lakh doesn't make any sense. Until and unless we compare, we relate that profit with either to sales revenue or uh, to the investment made. Right? So in this way broadly we divide those profitability ratios which are related with revenue or sales and those profitability ratios which are related with investment. So we categorize the ratios into general profitability ratios and overall profitability ratios. So general profitability ratios are those ratios which are related. Then a profit is related with the sales revenue and overall profitability ratios. Overall profitability ratios are those ratios in which profits are related with investments. So first we discuss about general profitability ratio. The first very common, very widely used profitability ratios, ratio is gross profit ratio. This is the most widely used ratio. So this ratio will show, will reveal the result of trading operations of the business. The trading means buying and selling. So the result of this trading operations, the result of this trading operations will be revealed by this gross profit ratio. So the formula for this gross profit ratio is gross profit by net sales into 100. Remember according to new terminology, instead of saying net sales, we can call it as revenue from operations. So gross profit divided by revenue from operations into 100. This will give you gross profit, the gross profit ratio. So how to find out the gross profit? Sales, uh, how to find out the gross profit? Sales minus cost of goods sold. Gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold according to old terminology. According to new terminology, Gross profit is equal to revenue from operations minus cost of revenue from operations. Cost of revenue from operations. There is no ideal or standard ratio. That means how much GP ratio a business must have. There is no ideal. Every business will have different gross profit ratio depending on the performance of trading operations. That's all. Next, second general profitability ratio is net profit ratio. This is also widely used ratio in order to evaluate the performance, overall performance. Here it is the core performance of trading operations. The GP ratio is applied for core operations, trading operations. But here net profit ratio will be applied for evaluating the overall performance. Not only core activities, but also all activities. What is the net profit from all the activities of the business? So it indicates the result of overall, of overall operations of the firm. When, while GP ratio indicates the extent of prop, uh, profitability of core operation, net profit ratio tells us about the overall profitability. 
so only core operation result is known from gp ratio overall result will be known from net profit ratio so formula for net profit is net profit divided by net sales into 100 or net profit divided by revenue from operations into 100 net sales means net revenue from operation a higher the ratio the more profitable is the business the conclusion of this net profit ratio is higher the ratio the better it is the business is good next third general profitability ratio is operating ratio now operating ratio expresses the relationship between all the operating cost the business will incur so many operating cost the operating cost to revenue from operations making a relationship between operating cost and revenue from operation is called operating ratio so expresses the relationship between expenses incurred for running the business all the expenses incurred for running the business is called operating cost and the resultant net sales net sales means revenue from operations so the formula is operating cost divided by net revenue from operation into 100 this net revenue from operation is nothing but sales so operating cost first of all you must know the meaning of the term operating cost operating cost is equal to cost of revenue from operations plus office and administration expenses plus selling and distribution expenses so remember the complete chapter depends on the formula so you have to remember these formulas without remembering the formula you cannot apply in the problem you cannot solve the problem you cannot give the interpretation so remember uh, operating cost is equal to cost of revenue from operation plus office and administration expense plus selling and distribution expense and operating cost does not involve financial expenses and abnormal losses these two things will not be taken in operating cost which are the two things first financial expenses like interest charges and secondly uh, abnormal losses like loss by fire that will not be taken in operating cost so a low operating ratio indicates operating efficiency whereas gp ratio gross profit ratio and net profit ratio higher the ratio better it is but operating ratio operating ratio the lower operating ratio ratio shows the efficiency of the business that means if the ratio is less the operating efficiency is more it is good so try to keep the operating ratio to the lower level then operating profit ratio operating profit ratio expresses the relationship between operating profit to net sales or operating profit to net revenue from operations the higher the ratio better it is so how to calculate operating profit from gross profit deduct operating expenses gross profit minus operating expenses you will get operating profit so operating profit divided by net revenue from operation into 200 the four the last and final general profitability ratio is expenses ratio in expenses ratio we calculate the ratio of every expense to net sales we are relating every expense to net sales or revenue from operation example salaries so we want to find out what is the percentage of salary on revenue from operation so salary is divided by revenue from operation into 100 similarly rent is another expense so we will calculate the percentage of rent on revenue from operations so rent divided by revenue from operation into 100 so every expense will be taken in the numerator and revenue from operation will take it in the denominator into 100 this will give you expense so totally five ratios i have explained which are called general profitability ratio gross profit ratio net profit ratio operating ratio operating profit ratio and expenses ratio now the second category of this profitability ratio is the overall profitability ratio here the profits are related not with the sales 
but it will be related with investment. So who will make the investment? The investment will be made by the owners, shareholders or the investment may be made by the supplier of funds. Example, debenture holders or bankers. These are the people who lended the loan to the company, right? So what is the profitability on investment that is disclosed, that is revealed by overall profitability ratio? The first very important overall profitability ratio is return on capital employed. It is called ROCE or return on investment ROI. So we can call it as ROCE or we can call it as ROI. Both means same. So this ratio reveals the earning capacity of the capital employed in the business. That means the total capital employed in the business. What is the percentage of profit earned on the total capital employed? Total capital employed includes the capital employed by the shareholders and the funds provided by the outsiders long-term funds provided by the outsiders. The formula for the return on capital employed is PBIT stands for profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed. Remember in the last video I have explained you the meaning of the term capital employed. Shareholders fund plus long-term liabilities. Shareholders fund plus long-term liability. What is shareholders fund? Equity share capital, preference share capital, reserves and surplus minus fictitious assets. To this you add long term liabilities like debentures or long term loans. If you add up debentures and long term loans to shareholders fund, you will get capital employed. So PBIT divided by capital employed into 100. This is called ROC, return on capital employed. Or return on investment. The return on capital employed is a true measure of the firm's ability to generate a return for its shareholder. The higher the ROC, better it is. So every business should strive to get a higher and higher ROC. Next, second overall ratio is return on net worth. Remember, net worth means shareholders fund. Here we have calculated the return on capital employed. Here we are calculating the return on net worth. Net worth means shareholders. Worth. So it indicates the return which, is, which the shareholders are earning on their resources. Shareholders means all shareholders. Equity shareholders and preference shareholders. All shareholders. What is the percentage of return which all shareholders will earn? So the amount of all shareholders is net worth. The formula for this return on net worth is profit after tax divided by net worth into 100. Again, the higher the ratio, better it is. That is of second. Now third, return on equity capital. Equity capital. It expresses the return earned by the owners of the business after adjusting for debt and preference capital. Actually, first of all, the company has to pay the return on debt in the form of interest. After paying the return on debt from the profit, the company will pay the dividend to preference shareholders. So after making the payment of dividend to preference shareholders, then the profit will be remaining for the real owners. The real owners of the business are equity shareholders. Right? So what is the return? which equity shareholders are getting. The owners are the real owners are the equity shareholders. They are interested in getting higher and higher return. So they are interested in finding out return on equity capital. So the formula for return on equity capital is PAT profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by equity share capital paid up share capital. The profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by paid up equity share capital. But some of the analysts, they say instead of taking equity capital in the denominator, it is better to take equity shareholders fund. So some author says, some financial analyst says, don't take equity share capital in the denominator, 
take equity share of fund. So we can calculate return on equity capital either by the first formula or by the second formula. In first formula, we are considering only capital. In the second formula, we are taking the fund, all equity shareholders fund, means equity share capital plus reserves and surplus minus fictitious asset. That is the meaning of equity shareholders fund. Now, fourth ratio is return on total assets. What is the percentage of profit on total assets? So, formula will be PAT. Profit after tax divided by total assets into 100. Next, earnings per share. This is very, very important ratio. Earnings per share. This will give you how much each shareholder is getting on every share they held. How much is the earning for every one share held by the shareholder? That is called earning per share. So, every organization will try to have higher and higher EPS, earning per share. So it is the earnings accruing to equity shareholder on one share held by. It is calculated as PAT, profit after tax, minus preference dividend, divided by number of equity shares. So PAT minus preference dividend divided by number of equity shares. This will give you EPS. Higher the EPS, better it is for the company. Now, Dividend per share. Dividend per share, the formula is how much dividend each shareholder is getting divided by number of equity shares. So, dividend on equity share capital divided by number of equity shares. This will give you dividend per share, DPS. So, EPS and DPS. Earnings per share, dividend per share. Next one, seventh one is DP ratio. Dividend per payout ratio actually all whatever is the earnings the whole earnings will not be distributed to shareholders a prudent company will keep a part of the profit a part of the earnings in the form of reserves example if a company earns 10 lakh rupees profit earnings the whole 10 lakh rupees will not be distributed in the form of dividend some part of earnings will be kept in reserve for future expansion, for future uncertainties. So out of 10 lakh, the board of directors have decided that 4 lakh rupees will be kept in reserves. Only 6 lakh rupees will be declared in the form of dividend. So dividend payout ratio shows how much proportion of earnings are declared in the form of dividend. The so formula for DP, uh, DP ratio Dividend payout ratio is DPS divided by EPS into 100. Dividend per share divided by earnings per share into 100. Now, price earning ratio. This is also a very important ratio. Very frequently asked in different problems. The price earning ratio. The formula is MPS divided by EPS. Market price per share divided by earnings per share. This will give you times, so don't multiply by 100, it is not a profit ratio. It is the MPS, how many times the market price is of the earnings per share. Example, if the earnings per share is 10 rupees and the market price per share is 100 rupees. So what is, how many times the market price per share is of earnings? 10 times, because EPS is 10 rupees. Market price is 100 rupees. So 100 divided by 10, you will get 10. So that is the uh, price earning ratio. Next one is dividend yield ratio. So it expresses the relationship between dividend earned per share and the market price per share. The formula for dividend yield ratio is DPS divided by MPS. Dividend per share divided by market price per share. Last and final ratio is Book value per share. Book value per share. That means according to balance sheet, what is the equity shareholders fund? So equity shareholders fund according to the balance sheet values. So divided by number of equity shares. So equity shareholders fund will include equity share capital plus reserves and surplus minus fictitious asset. That you take it in the numerator. 
denominator number of equity shares this will give you the book value per share that's it ha so totally five general profitability ratios and 10 overall profitability ratios i have explained now remember without remembering all these formulas and the interpretation you cannot go to the problem otherwise every problem will be difficult for you so my suggestion is first of all be perfect with all the theory videos and then only you go for problems all the problems are based on the theory which i have explained so watch all the videos totally six seven videos i am uploading on this theory of ratio analysis then inshallah in the next video i'll start the problems on ratio analysis